Live streaming is on. Hello, everyone. This is Adam Meister, the Bitcoin Meister, the Disrupt Meister. Welcome to the One Bitcoin Show. Today is May the 10th, 2020. Strong hand, long term thinking, unconfiscatable. Bitcoin is the next Bitcoin. Personal responsibility is the new counterculture. Offended by selling, having hype. Having hype, guys. One day closer to an all time high. Hello, my elite friends. How you doing late at night here on a Sunday? Well, on a, well, it's a Sunday night turning into Monday. And of course, this Monday, it is the long awaited 2020 Bitcoin halving. Uh, I guess this is my celebration. The next show I'll do, it'll be after the halving. Maybe I'll appear on someone else's halving show. You should be happy that you're live to see this and the fun has just started. You're early. Um, and for the people watching this in 2028, oh, I know you wish you were here with me. Wish you were here, Pink Floyd, found that like button. Okay, if you've got questions, I've got answers. Type in the questions into the chat. I will uh, probably see them eventually, catch my attention somehow. Uh, and check out uh, This Week in Bitcoin it was on Friday. It was a great time. Uh, who was on the show? I, I lost my uh, notes here. Where are my notes? There it is. Uh, we had Brady, Surfer Jim, and Vlad were all on the show. So are you... Are you prepared for the 2024 having? I mean, you can't prepare for the 2020 having anymore. It's like get a couple hours. <sighs> oh my God. Uh, no one deserves to be a whole coiner, says social justice warriors in 2030. <laughs> so this is how you prepare for 2024 because the social justice warriors could be saying that in 2024. That will be awesome if they're saying that as early as 2024. That tweet is from BTC is scarcity. No one deserves to be a whole coiner. Social justice warriors in 2030. Yeah, they might be saying that as early as 2024. So get prepared. This name of the show is the one Bitcoin show. So become a whole coiner before 2024. There, there's your goal right there. So the social justice warriors can say that you that you need to have your Bitcoin taken away from you. That you know they say billionaires are criminals now. That's what the, they're comparing it to. No one deserves to have a billion dollars. It's it. <laughs> no one deserves to have a Bitcoin either, right? That's what they're gonna say. So make sure you have that Bitcoin and get in that mindset right now. It's never too early to prepare. I started talking about the 2020 halving in 2016. Clearly. My title, the first thing I put in this title is 2024 having, uh, because I'm not going, I'm not part of the, I'm happy people are celebrating the 2020 having today. I don't need to celebrate it, man. I've been celebrating it for four years. I've been living the buy and hold life for longer than that. So I'm, I'm forward thinking that I'm already, I got my mind wrapped around the 2024 having, so it's going to be a fun run up to that. And we're going to we're going to talk a little bit more about the 2020 having in a second, or about post 2020 having. You know, what to expect? Uh, because you can still hype the having, that the having hype it, it's going on right now, and it'll it can go on after the having too. So we'll go into that into a second. In a second, follow me on Twitter at TechBalt T E C H B A L T. Now, uh, I talked about BISC on this week in Bitcoin. And I said it was hard for Americans to use banks with BISC. Well, apparently it looked hard. <laughs> I obviously never tried it. Uh, a couple people contacted me and said, no, no, I've, I've done it. I've bought, uh, I've, I've used fiat to buy Bitcoin on BISC with an American bank. Okay, I'll take your word for it, dude. I never did it before. So I wanted to add that correction for those who uh, watched this week in Bitcoin on Friday, if I if I scared you away from from trying that, I, I, I mean I'm not comfortable trying something like that. I mean I'll, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I don't want my my I don't deal with the, the those transfer or bank. I don't want to deal with bank transfers. I don't want to deal with bank transfers. Why deal with bank transfers anymore? I mean I'm in the Bitcoin. I value my wealth in Bitcoin. Okay, so speaking about the valuing your wealth in Bitcoin, there's some people that value their wealth in 
I don't why. I mean, they like to buy XRP and EOS. XRP is Ripple. Uh, they like to buy EOS and Tezos, whatever the flavors of the month are. And decrypt.co has an article. XR 98% of XRP transactions are empty, says report. Yowza. A new research paper found uh, finds that several major cryptocurrencies are largely used for the blockchain's equivalent of spam. <laughs> the paper's abstract states, our analysis reveals that only a small fraction of the transactions are used for value transfer purposes. In particular, 95% of the transfer transactions on EOS were triggered by airdrops of currently valueless tokens. On Tezos, 82% of throughput was used for maintaining consensus. And only 2% of transactions on XRP Ledger led to value transfers. So someone says, what's the point of being able to run millions of transactions per second if the demand simply isn't there? I don't know. They get to brag how fast they are. We do millions of transactions per, millions of transactions of spam per second. All right, that's your thing. You can buy into that stuff if you want the centralized nonsense over there. You can stick with Bitcoin. It, 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 it currently doesn't run millions of transactions per second, but uh, the transactions that are on it are meaningful. Are people sending real value? They're not spamming one another and such. Uh, it's, it's actually being used for something, okay? Used. Ripple, I don't, I don't know what that is. It's you, you spam, spam games on EOS, Ripple, and uh, Tezos, Flavors of the Month. Enjoy. But I don't, I don't think they should be destroyed. Let them, let them do their thing. I, I know that Bitcoin is the next Bitcoin. Nothing else is the next Bitcoin. Let them do their thing. I've got no problem. Link to below are all of this week in Bitcoin uh, episodes, the last nine at least. It says watch nine this week in Bitcoin episodes here. So click on that. Watch them. They're always, they've been good. Oh, this, this coming Friday, uh, we'll be shooting for uh, hopefully 2 p.m. Baltimore time. I'm bringing back a guest who hasn't been on for three years. He's a good guy. He just hasn't been on for three years. <laughs> so literally, uh, May 19th was the last time. May 19th, 2017. We'll talk more. We'll, hopefully, it'll all get set up. Oh, and by the way, thanks for the support. Someone sent me uh, $5 worth of $5.85 worth of Bitcoin. He says, happy having Eve Eve. He sent it to me yesterday. So I guess now is having Eve. Thank you, dude, for sending me the Bitcoin, for supporting the show. I've got all – hey, the best way everyone can support the show for free, just retweet this. Share. Share this channel on Twitter. Subscribe to the channel, the backup channel. Yeah, it's the backup channel for now, but you never know. But, hey, this is how you stay in touch with me on YouTube. But Twitter is – Twitter, Tech Vault, is the center of the Bitcoin Meister uh, ecosystem. So make sure you're on Twitter and you just retweet stuff. That's how you support the show. It's great. Uh, thank you. So the you fiat freaks were freaking out this weekend, weren't you? And I warned you, I, I said on Thursday that the unemployment report was coming out on Friday and that the price could drop from the 10,000s into the 8,000s. Now, it dropped into the 8,000s. It had nothing to do with the unemployment report, but it happened. So were any of you shocked? No, not all of your hands should have been strong. You should have took it in stride like I did, like I am. I didn't put it in my title for clickbait or anything because I'm not worried about it. I mean, it's having Eve. Be happy about the having. Be happy about the 2024. Long-term thinking. Dude, if you're not used to these type of drops, I mean, you're a newbie, I guess. I don't, I don't know. You're not paying attention. You don't have a listening comprehension, reading comprehension, any comprehension. <laughs> All right. That, that, it's, it's not a short-term thing. It's a long-term thinking type of play here. Rocky corrected me. Uh, well, I... I believe it was on This Week at Bitcoin. I was asking the guest why the node count has dropped. And Rocky has an answer. The node count is going down because they are counting open nodes. Nodes, and I think I mentioned, this might have been mentioned on a past show a long time ago, but just in case it wasn't, I know I've read this before once Rocky jogged my memory. He says uh, open nodes. Nodes open on the internet. But it is getting easier all the time to run a node behind Tor. So you can't see those. Uh, projects like Raspberry Bolt, Rasp, Rasp, 
Blitz, my node, and others now make it very easy to run your node behind Tor. And thus, more people are doing that, and you can't see the open nodes, and thus it looks like they're less nodes, but in fact, there are more nodes that are hidden back behind Tor. Anyway, and most of them are now setting up the node to run Tor as a, de as a default. Many people just go with the default. Okay. It's the same with lightning nodes. It looks like the lightning node numbers are going down, but more of them are running behind Tor also. In fact, I think it's a higher percent percentage of lightning nodes that are behind Tor. Well, thank you, Rocky, um, for, for answering my question and clearing everything up. Link to below is uh, a having hype video that was sent to me uh, from uh, FOMO Hunt. <laughs> Watch it if you want to get hyped, having hype. Uh, Jeff sent me the following article. It's from a uh, Bitcoin futures perspective. The CME group wrote it, okay? So they're biased toward futures, all right? And their take on the having is that it's different this time. And one of the big reasons it's different this time is because futures are going to play a major role in, uh, in the process uh, going into the having and after the having. Uh, obviously, that's their, they're, they're going to focus on that in the article because that's what they do, that they, they are, uh, they're dealing with futures. So they, of course, they think it's going to play a, a big role in all of this. It was, a, it was a good article, though. So, so read the article. I don't agree with it. It's a different perspective. It's a unique perspective. I don't agree with it uh, 100%, but it's it, check it out. So thank you, uh, thank you, Jeff, for sending that article. So Coinbase crashed on Saturday again because Bitcoin went down $1,500 in less than an hour. <laughs> Dudes, uh, not surprising. And so people get angry. It's not surprising that Bitcoin goes down fifteen hundred dollars in less than an hour. If that shocks you, still, I, I don't know what to say. Welcome to the party, I guess. It's there are going to be days that are worse than that. There are going to be days where it goes up fifteen hundred dollars an hour, and that's that's the beauty of being alive. You don't know when you're going to get that rush. When the next when, when's the next time Bitcoin's going to go up two thousand dollars in an hour? Oh, what a rush! Pound that like button. Yeah, I can I can give you some famous wrestler sayings. It's not just Ric Flair. I can give you some other guys too. Oh yeah, brother. So uh, anyway, why? Th this is my question. There are a lot of people that get angry at Coinbase when this happens. And sure, it's very inconvenient <laughs> when the price is crashing, and then you're like, oh, better go buy now. Better go buy, and you can't buy. It's frustrating. It's a frustrating feeling indeed. But but he here's the deal, dudes. You. Try and think long-term about this. Ha value your wealth in Bitcoin. Get all the Bitcoins you need now for the future. Do are you like, well, I'll get some when it crashes again. I'll get This is the thing. I remember four years ago, and it was like almost exactly four years ago now. Bitcoin was around $680. Bitfinex got hacked, and then the price crashed to $540. All right. And Coinbase crashed and I couldn't get on and I couldn't get on it. I couldn't get 540 Bitcoin and I tried to. All right. And I was frustrated. And then, you know, I didn't I didn't get it. I mean, uh, now looking back on that, what was the difference between five hundred forty dollars and six hundred eighty dollars? What, what, what's the difference? What was the difference? Now, there's no difference. Absolutely no difference at all from me getting it before that crash or after that crash or during that crash, whatever. So those of you who think you miss opportunities, take a bigger, bigger picture of this. Okay. Um, I let's say that I, because of all that nonsense, I missed out on buying a Bitcoin. I, I lost the Bitcoin because I didn't understand. I was thinking in fiat terms. I was thinking in fiat terms. And one day you're going to look back on Ten thousand dollars or eighty one hundred dollars. What's what's the difference? What's the difference between ten thousand dollars and eighty one hundred dollars? If you were just trying to buy one bitcoin, if your goal in life is to have twenty one bitcoin, and you you and now you have twenty and you didn't get that one now because it just dropped and you're never going to get that one, well then you miss out on that one bitcoin because of 
you you thought there was a difference between ten thousand and eight and, and eight thousand. And when it's in the six digit realm one day, you're going to see like, oh, rat. I, I, I have 20 Bitcoin. I should have 21 Bitcoin, but I don't because I thought there was a difference between that time. So I get it's frustrating when Coinbase crashes and you can't get Bitcoin on sale. OK, I, I understand. But uh, if, if you miss the sale, no big deal. You can still get the Bitcoin uh, for, for the 10,000 or for whatever it bounces back up to. Because one day you will look back and, and there will be no difference between the sale price and the, the price you bought for it. When if you, if you don't buy for it, you buy it at all, you're just going to regret it. No coinage. All right. Pound that like button. But I, see, I just see a lot of viciousness toward Coinbase. Uh, now, I sort of agree with uh, something that Tor Demeester says here, Okay. But I got to clarify one thing. He says, in my opinion, retail will only really start paying attention again once Bitcoin rallies past its previous all-time high at $20,000. When we went to $14,000 last summer, I felt like barely anyone noticed. Okay. So I think for the last few months, there's been plenty of 20% or smart retail buying Bitcoin. Okay. That doesn't cause as much of a blip as the herd, okay? The herd retail does exactly what you just said, Tour de Meester. They are not comfortable until we go, we get an all-time high again. They don't come until we get an all-time high. So it's a, it shows you, don't be part of the herd. Don't wait until it's at an all-time high. Get a, get it now. Get, get more than one right now, dudes. Uh, don't, don't wait till it's it's at a, that makes you feel comfortable when it's at a, that that that's herd meant and then they everyone's like yes it's all time high now and everyone else is buying it so I'm buying it that's that's not the best uh, that's not the best way of looking at it dudes not not that's herd mentality right there and we're seeing what herd mentality uh, does in the regular world today so I, I will say to Tur Demister that. Uh, yeah, uh, oh, the, the the herd retail is not here yet, and the herd retail only uh, only comes at an all time high. I think the all time high when we get there, because we're one day closer to an all time high, it will trigger a lot of interest. I think that's ludicrous. I think it, it you should you should be interested in Bitcoin uh, for for long term purposes, and, and you don't need the confirmation of a herd. To get into it so now is the time <laughs> yesterday was the time uh february 12th or march the 12th was the time and tour de Meester also says something that i'm going to disagree with here he says bitcoin derivatives can indeed quench speculators thirst for massive short-term gain and thus undermine the general appeal of altcoins dudes dude I, I don't think um, most people that are gamblers on altcoins that are like, I'm buying altcoins to get more Bitcoin. Okay. That's the only reason I'm doing it, dude. I think they, uh, I, I think they like the shininess and the, the wild uh, price swings of altcoins, the, the hundred X potential of altcoins. They can, um, they can grasp that a lot easier than futures contracts and stuff. Okay. And then Bitcoin derivatives. All right. I, I, I so I don't think, uh, I think some more knowledgeable speculators uh, will, will choose Bitcoin derivatives instead of gambling on all coins. Of course, of course. But, but most people with the gambling mentality, uh, you know, all, all coins aren't going to become uh, a thing of the past for gamblers because of uh, Bitcoin derivatives. They can't quench the, the thirst of the gambler. Uh, anyway. So less than 12 hours away now until the Bitcoin halving. Wow. I will say Coin Delt Telegraph, I was impressed. They had an article that used having hype in their title. Very good. And yes. So last time in 2016, it was on a Saturday, the halving. And it happened. We were happy. <laughs> no, no major price swings that day. And nothing too exciting afterwards. The price went down some. 
Price went up some. It took about six months until things really got rolling. And I guess it was about seven or eight months after the halving until we eclipsed the all-time high from, 20, from late 2013. So there's your game plan, people. Don't be disappointed if it's a month from now and Bitcoin is $8,000. Nothing to be disappointed at all about. It's, it takes time. It takes time for the supply, uh, supply shock <laughs> to be noticed and uh, for the hype. So you keep on hyping the halving afterwards, all right? You tell people the new supply has been cut in half. Tell them about supply and demand. Tell them about Bitcoin. People will wake up, say, get in before the herd. Every time Bitcoin has uh, returned to its all-time high, it's one day close to its all-time high. So some of this having excitement, you might not feel until December of this year or maybe till January of next year. It's all a process. So this is the tomorrow or yeah, today, whatever you want to say, is the day that you party and you get to be happy that you had a strong hand and you lived through the 2020 having. So you can tell all your buddies in 2024 that you're an OG <laughs> and that you know what a having is all about. But it's it's a process. So uh, get ready. Get and it's it's fun now that we're we've we've actually gotten through the actual having part of it. <laughs> we get to experience the results slowly and then uh, pretty suddenly. So it, get ready for some fun times. December, November, 2021, when, or December, November this year, 2021, January, February, who knows? Who knows? Uh, but we're one day closer to that all-time high, baby. And uh, it's, it's, it's good to be alive for it. And I haven't been looking at the questions at all. <laughs> but I see we got people over there. Okay, good, good. There were no, there were no questions. Very good, very good. No questions at all. Uh, how you doing, uh, New Zealand uh, Barry and uh, UK uh, Bitcoin Master in the house? The having show, having hype, baby. Two hundred ten thousand blocks until the next time. Yeah, baby. Basically, we got two hundred ten thousand blocks till the twenty twenty four having. Uh, at this point, a little, a little bit more than that. A little bit more than that. But depending on when you're watching this uh, today. So, I'm, I'm just still thinking about twenty twenty six having. I've got to fix my hair. Bangs, man. Look at those bangs. All right. By the way, watch yesterday's Beyond Bitcoin show. It was pretty fun. At the end, I talk about a dream I had. Ooh, dreams. Okay. So back to the show. Let's see. Um, where is this? US. Oh, why the US dollar is going to remain dominant? There's a nice infographic illustrating the U.S. dollar's dominance in world trade from Mark Carney's paper for the Group of 30. This is a tweet from Tordem Easter I've been meaning to mention for a while. And it really, uh, some of these charts just show the how, how these tremendous international transactions, how much is done in, in U.S. dollars. It's, it's overwhelming. I mean, the United States... I forgot, makes up, I'm getting this wrong now. It, was it 12% of uh, the world GDP? I mean, it's, it's a substantial percent. And, and, and that is, that's good for the US dollar. But the other statistics are much more overwhelming than that, like 67% for something. I forgot, I forgot all the measurements that are there. But you see it in this nice infographic. And I don't see how you can doubt the US dollar at all. What, what's going to surpass it in terms of other fiats? At the same time, because there are still so many people. If one thing we've learned through this cor this uh, coronavirus thing is, is that uh, U.S. dollar is the king <laughs> of the fiats, and what if if the if the if the, uh, if the virus can't take it down, if this can't what what can take it down? I mean, because when when you try to take the U.S. dollar down with all with a, a man uh, man made panic like this, now again the, the virus really. The, the reaction is is what is is horrible here, is what's causing economic uncertainty. But if that can't take down, it, it takes down the U.S. dollar. It takes all the other ones down worse. So you, you see why in, in the, this infographic. Again, this is I know there's a lot of Bitcoiners. I, I try to give the pers my perspective on this. I don't I don't need to go with the herd 
on this. And there's so many Bitcoiners left. The US dollar is going to die. Bitcoin will become the world reserve currency, not the world reserve cryptocurrency, which is already a world reserve cryptocurrency. I don't agree with that. I think the dollar will remain uh, will remain dominant for an incredibly long time. And the smart people will get into uh, Bitcoin because over time, all of the currencies inflate. Will the US dollar hyperinflate? No, no, I don't think it will at all. Um, but I, I still think a bit, you want to be you want to be valuing your wealth in Bitcoin. There's no need to be in any inflating currency at all. But the best of the best is the U.S. dollar. The best of the worst, which is fiat, is the U.S. dollar. Now, and even if we come enter a world, and I do hope we enter a world where companies or anyone can make their own cryptocurrency, and and so there'll be many more competitors to. Uh, there'll, there'll be private currencies, uh, company currencies competing with na national fiat currencies. That's going to that'll probably destroy some a lot of fiat currencies. Still, the U.S. dollar will survive. It, it, it will survive even that, and it will evolve. It will evolve to in incorporate some of those uh, new types of, of currencies because everybody wants a piece in the United States of America. Uh, it, it's the it's the capital of. Uh, of society, it's the uh, it's uh, the way uh, what I, popular culture. It's the cultural hub of the world, basically. That so many people try to emulate, and at the same time, and that's all. And some of it is so fake, you know, the fake culture, the disgusting stuff. We, we said, but the innovation is in the United States. Even in cryptocurrency, the innovation is mostly in the United States. At the same time, I'm I'm proud to say that the rebels are in the United States too. Those, you know, all the, the protests against this uh, fascist world regime that everyone's under now, the biggest ones are in the United States, which, which is awesome also. So it's, it's, a, it's a special place, and uh, the dollar is the currency of that special place. And uh, some of you are saying, you're just biased because you're an American. And had, you, had I said this like 10 years ago, you might have had a point, but I've, I've, traveled, I've traveled around. I've seen it. I've seen quite a lot, and I've dabbled in this cryptocurrency thing for seven years. Really gotten deep into a lot of aspects of uh, currencies, and now I, I'm U.S. dollar sticking around uh, for a number of reasons. I mean, it is it is the financial representation of the power of the United States, and the power of the United States on this planet is incredible. Now, uh, most people can't grasp numbers. Thus, they are confused about the virus. Okay, that's fine. I get that. I, I get that. A lot of people get scared by outliers. I, I understand that. But then you have smart people who can grasp certain numbers, but then they can get blinded by, this vi by virus numbers. It's unbelievable. Because they get emotional, I guess, or they get scared. They have a natural fear. And I guess there are some people that are really germaphobes, really germaphobes. And it just, if they think there's a germaphobe, a germ threat out there, they're going to, they could be a great with numbers, but then they, they just get caught. They get caught in this little world, this panic prison, and uh, they don't get the numbers with, with the virus at all. At the same time, it still makes me, when I see some of these Bitcoiners and other financial people out there who I never would have guessed would be virtue signaling with their mask and their pictures and all this nonsense, you, you do have to start to wonder like about some of their other financial predictions. Like, are there some emotions that are biasing them also? Uh, they, maybe they're just super smart people. And they can keep emotion out certain times, but a lot of the times they can't. Maybe some of their other financial predictions are are, are messed up if they're uh, if they're so entranced and by the outlier numbers in this virus that they're saying some of the whack things that they're saying. It, it does make you wonder. Uh, I hope they can separate uh, finance and emotion, but this makes me this adds a new. A new level, of, and that's why you don't put these people in pedestals. So finally, I will leave you with this worst-case scenario, 
worst case scenario, people are saying that there's no cure. There's no, there's no uh, cure and there's no, what's it? Yeah. <laughs> no uh, vaccine. I can't, couldn't think of the word vaccine. So I say, well, okay, if that's the case, then people are actually going to have to get in shape and eat healthy. Like they're going to actually have to take care of themselves you know, instead of just relying on, oh, the, there's, there's a problem. I'll be able to take a pill for it. I'll be able to take a vaccine for it. I don't need to, I don't need to remain in shape. I don't need to remain healthy. People are actually going to have to learn about their health, about maintain, having a good health baseline. So I don't think it's a worst case scenario at all. I, th I think that's a, it's a good, I think it's a good scenario. It's going to wake a lot of people up that there is no magic pill here. At the same time, we're going to learn about herd immunity too. <laughs> and uh, also, this is not for most people. Again, for most people, again, this is not a bad thing to really catch. It's just it is what it is. But for those who are going to be worried about it, if you're going to be worried about it, and you you end up with your worst case scenario of no vaccine, no cure, then if you want to leave your house again, if you want to confidently leave your house again, uh, you should get in shape. So I don't think that's a uh, I think I think that's a, a good result of all this. So uh, don't don't get freaked out by those words. Worst case scenario, no cure. No, it's that's not a worst case scenario. That's people learn to take care of themselves. All right, personal responsibility is a new counterculture that that would bring it into mainstream culture, wouldn't it? All right, everybody, that's it. Have a happy having. I'm Adam Meister, the Bitcoin Meister, the Disrupt Meister. Remember, subscribe to the channel, like this video, share this video. Uh, pound that like button. I'm just seeing if there's anything left over there. Uh, all right, dudes. Have a great uh, evening and afternoon and enjoy all of those uh, live shows. And uh, yeah, 2024 having, baby. Coming, coming in uh, 46 months. See you tomorrow night to wrap up uh, 2020 having.